Today I'm going to be talking about Jane Parker, the Lady Rochford. Jane was the wife of George Boleyn, and while her execution came much later than Anne and George's, and at first glance seems to be totally unrelated to their downfall, I would venture to say that those bloody May days had a lot to do with Jane's own eventual disgrace. Over the years, Jane has been blamed for giving evidence against her husband and his sister. She has been called a wicked wife, jealous, and voyeuristic. She has been portrayed as an outright she-wolf and sexual deviant in both print and television. But do those characterizations really stack up? The idea that George and Jane's marriage is an unhappy one seems to have little basis in fact. For a marriage that has been painted as so tumultuous, it can be surprising for some to find that really it was quite unremarkable. Literally. There are only two primary sources that makes any mention of the union, and one of them was in a poem written by George Cavendish, a beloved servant of Cardinal Wolsey. Cavendish blamed the Boleyns for Wolsey's disgrace, and his poem, Metrical Visions, bears out that bias. In fact, most of it has been dismissed by serious historians. The other piece of contemporary evidence we have comes from Master Kingston, who was constable of the Tower during George and Anne's imprisonment. His remarks are more formal. In a report to Thomas Cromwell, he mentions that Jane sent him a letter begging him to comfort George and assure him that she will speak to the king on his behalf. Hardly the words of someone who hated her husband. And if she was so unhappy, wouldn't it have been easier to just wash her hands of George once he was in the tower? Why go through so much trouble? The truth is that Jane probably had very little time to develop a distaste for her husband because he was out of the country on diplomatic miss missions most of the time, which probably explains why there were no children of the Union. Jane is often painted as a conniving sister-in-law, obsessively jealous over Anne. Well, there may be a grain of truth to the jealousy factor, but it's likely a lot less sinister. Anne was exotic. She was beautiful and social. She was intelligent and vivacious, and by all accounts, men loved her. It would be really difficult not to be envious of Anne. In fact, it's really only human nature. I think we can all identify with feeling that way about another person, but that doesn't mean that envy caused Jane to hate Anne. Jane must have liked Anne well enough to risk getting herself in trouble in any case. In autumn of 1534, Jane and Anne banded together to get a lady who had caught Henry's fancy removed from court. Their meddling was a great annoyance to Henry, and ultimately Jane was exiled instead. Jane had nothing to gain from the fall of the Boleyns, and everything to lose. Once George was gone, she no longer had all the luxuries that she had grown accustomed to. She had to plead with Cromwell for assistance in getting her jointure, and it wasn't as though it happened overnight when she was finally successful. It may have looked as though Jane moved on by serving Anne's successors, but really she had little choice in the matter. And I think it's really telling that she never remarried and spent most of her remaining life living in black widow's clothing. The reckless behavior with Queen Catherine Howard and the later mental instability Jane displayed as a prisoner in the tower points to the psychological effect George and Anne's disgrace had on her, and Jane may have even suffered from a mild form of PTSD. In conclusion, instead of Jane being the vile instigator in the fall of the Boleyns, I think more likely she could be counted as collateral damage.